You know, I may be a leading voice in space weather and Earth's disaster cycle, and I may be credited with discovering how the sun magnetically triggers massive earthquakes, but those things didn't get me on the news, or the largest single influx of new professors and NASA scientists in my inbox. Yes, that was my fat phase, but it was also the Earth spot science, the birth of it, that caused the single greatest surge in respected scientists joining the crowd here. So let's go over it in the latest study on the subject. Let's start with the field setup. This is a page from our textbook. The far left shows the various solar magnetic fields, from the big ones wrapping around the sun from pole to pole, to the lowest level arches over the solar equator. It turns out, the Earth, as seen in the images to the right, has the exact same setup. Whether it's the global polar fields or the lower level L shells on the Earth and coronal fields on the Sun, there is a dramatically similar setup to the field structure at a massive scale. When I saw this in 2014, I wondered, could the electromagnetic similarities continue down to smaller scales? That's where the fun began. It was obvious that the field setup was the same at large scale, so let's go down and take a deeper dive. Sunspots. This multi-year plot shows where the sunspots appear, and as you can see, it is not an even distribution. They like the areas just outside of the equator, around where the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn would be on Earth. Sunspots are the biggest and most dramatic surface features. And how interesting. That's exactly where the biggest and most dramatic storms on Earth like to form. Never on the Earth's equator. The hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones like those tropical and low latitude bands of formation. So that's interesting. Our first step down looking for electromagnetic similarities reveals the biggest and most dramatic features only form in specific locations, and they're the same locations on the Earth and the Sun. Up next, let's take a closer look at sunspots. They have a central eye called the umbra, and the surrounding streaks are called the penumbra, kind of like the clouds around a hurricane eye. The sunspots are always flashing with low-level flares, like lightning in a thunderstorm, and they can have extreme events called solar flares where high-energy light is emitted and particles are erupted. These, by the way, are what causes solar storms at Earth. Tropical storms not only have their umbra and penumbra, the eye and the clouds, but some of the cloud streams even look like the penumbral streaks around a sunspot. Storms always have lightning flashing, and in big events called terrestrial gamma flashes, they emit high-energy gamma ray light and particle blasts out into space, just like a solar flare from a sunspot. So okay, we've just learned that there are physical shape similarities between tropical storms and sunspots. They both have a lot of low-level flashing as flares and lightning, and the bigger versions, known as solar flares and terrestrial gamma flashes, that's pretty interesting in terms of the coincidences lining up. But up next, we're coming to the global electric circuit in Earth's atmosphere. There is an electric current connecting high pressure cells to low pressure, like those storms, and it goes up from the low pressure across the ionosphere at the top of the sky and back down in high pressure. Guess what? Sunspots do the exact same thing, and we see those arches here. They connect sunspot to sunspot, and just like the ones on Earth, connecting high to low pressure, on the sun, they connect positive and negative polarity sunspots. That's actually kind of amazing. On top of everything else, there are similar large-scale electromagnetic flows on the Earth and the sun. But we've got one more, the heartbeat. Whether you're looking at a smaller storm in a low pressure cell, or deep into a sunspot. There are pulsations from the center seen as concentric waves moving outward from the center, and they are between one and three minutes between pulses. That goes for both the Earth and the Sun. Come on now, large magnetic field structure is the same. The major features, sunspots and storms, form in the same places. They have similar shapes the same electromagnetic activity features as well. Similar electromagnetic connections between opposite atmospheric structures exist on Earth and Sun, and the heartbeat of the storms and the sunspots from the center. With matched timing, sunspots on the Sun, Earth spots on Earth. This is still a decade later, not in textbooks or part of any official mainstream science kind of destroys a large fraction of modern atmospheric science and climate dynamics. But the obviousness of it is what brought those experts around here anyway. 
This recent story came out. Trying to find an atmospheric explanation for the hurricane penumbral lines, I found their explanation insufficient, as are most in this subfield. Like I said, this is not yet mainstream, the whole earth spot electromagnetic science. And there are tons of floundering studies, like this one, that always fall short because they are not including the bigger picture. Earth spots. And by the way, there should be other scales of these features too. Can you think of any? Bigger or smaller? Subscribe and I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe everyone.